Hi there, my name's Angie. I'm a type 1 diabetic. I've been type 1 for about 49 years since I was 4 years old, and I've been on an insulin pump for about 30 years. I started with the Medtronic and then went to the Tandem and have just recently started on the new Beta Bionic Eyelid Pump. And when I was researching this pump, I tried to find stories about other people that were on it and what they liked and what their experience was, but I couldn't find any. So I thought I would start a channel. And hopefully if any of you are looking at an eyelet or know someone who is, this may help. I thought I'd talk about the training since it just happened a couple days ago and it's fresh in my mind just so everyone could kind of understand what was involved. It took about 90 minutes. I did it at my local hospital, but that's just because I work there and I, you don't need to have it at a hospital. You don't even need to be in person. I did it on Teams and that was great. I didn't have a diabetic educator there. You could. I asked if I could record it to show it to some of my diabetic educator friends and they were fine with that. So they were very accommodating and it went very smoothly. I was asked to bring a few things with me to my training. I brought my pump that was charged up. I brought infusion sets. I brought an extra Dexcom. I think I brought the battery pad, but we didn't need it. I think I brought my glucose monitor, but we didn't need that either. And then they asked that the, you put the app on your phone and make an account for yourself. And once I got there, the first thing we did was pair the pump with the app and that was fairly easy to do. We upgraded the software and that's how you'll do it from now on. Instead of plugging in your, your, your pump like we did with the Tandem, you just do it Bluetooth via the app to download your software, upgrade and or get reports for your doctor. And then after that, we, what did we do? We paired my G6. I am still on the G6. I've just haven't switched over to G7 and I'm probably not going to until they make me just because the G6 has worked just fine for me. I did not need to put a new G6 on. They let me just use the same one. I didn't need the code, which is good because I had already thrown it away. I just needed the transmitter uh, serial number. And so I did have to take off my old pump and go put it in my office because you can't have a Dexcom run on two devices at once. So that was the only thing that we had to do. After that, we put on the infusion set and I chose this kind of infusion set. It's very similar to Tandem's. In fact, it's probably exactly the same. It's the 90 degree one that is six millimeters. I think they, they might even have a nine millimeter, but I could be wrong. They also have a steel needle one, which I don't like those kind. When I did use this with the Tandem, I tended to get kinks in the cannula. And so I switched over to the 45 degree insertion set and the trainer did say that they were going to come out with one for eyelet. So I hope that comes out soon. Next, we have a syringe and a needle similar to the tandem. And then the nice little insulin vial. It holds up to 180 units. And I don't think we're going to have the problem like there is with the tandem where it leaves 50 units in there every time you are done. So I'm very excited about this little vial. And then next we have a little connector and it connects the vial of insulin to the infusion set. And then after that, we went through all the menus. And I'll kind of go through them with you. I won't go in them very in depth just because I'm not sure about them all quite yet. All right, I got it out. But it's, it's easier. It's easier than the tandem, but you kind of have to like that. So when you first go into it, there's a little menu button and there's six icons and within them, there's a couple little sub menus, but it's really not very much. There's a uh, icon with a glucometer that you can enter your blood glucose if you need to calibrate or if you lose connection with your sensor. There is a Dexcom icon where you can stop sensor, start a sensor. You can tell it which alerts you want for highs, lows, urgent low, and a fall rate. The CGM info, which has your sensor code and your transmitter serial number, all those kind of things. When's it going to expire? Uh, you can switch 
your sensor from a G6 to a G7. There's also a little icon for a mobile device and it tells you what it's paired with. Then you have your regular settings, which is about eyelet. The therapy, you can say what your target range is. You can either be, and don't quote me, but I think it's 130, 120, or 110. I've picked 110. And then you can set a sleep CGM target. And I'm not sure what the, what the ranges are from that. I have it off right now, but I'll look further into that and maybe let you know. And then a place where you can put your body weight. And your body weight is really the only thing you have to do to set this up. You just put in your body weight. He said it will come up every 90 days and ask you if you're the same weight and to only change it if you go up or down 15%. It also has other, which is a shutdown, restart, limited access where you could put a pin number in and a factory reset. And then it has a history, which will tell you your alarm history, your meal history, your cartridges, your infusion set. It does show you algorithm steps, which is kind of interesting. This is different than I've ever seen. Every five minutes, it checks your blood sugar and then gives you insulin accordingly. And so like mine says at 12.38 p.m., it was 110, and I got an insulin dose of 0 0.01. And then the next one was CGM 109. It also says insulin 0 0.05, which I think is part of the basal, and then required insulin 0 0.04. So I don't know if one is kind of a correction and one is just the regular basal. I'm not sure. I'm not a scientist. Don't, don't quote me on that, but that might be where it is. But it is kind of fun to go back and look at how much it gives you for each number. It also tells you your insulin history, which doesn't show you your total daily dose, but it does to tell you your total daily basal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then the last one is the volume of your alarms and you have high, medium, low, or off. And I will go into that a little bit later, um, but yes, that's that. It also, if you escape out of that and go to the main screen, you can click the middle at the top and it's a little, little shot and it will tell you how many units of insulin you have available, when you need to change your cartridge and tubing, uh, to, and how to fill the cannula and then fill tubing only. And then when you go over to, there's one more, it's a little bell, and that's your notification bell. And this one got me, because I didn't realize, because I've had it beep at me a couple times, that you have to go into the notifications to see what the alarm is. It's not like deck, or not like Tandem, where you get an alarm and you open up your thing and it tells you, hey, you're gonna go below 70. You have to actually go into the notification menu to see what alarm is going off. And the main screen, has a little circle around it with your blood sugar. It's 115 right now. And if you click on that, that is where you will see your ranges for 24 hours, 12 hours, six hours, and three hours. And if you click a little icon next to that, it will give you your uh, kind of condensed report for one day, seven days, 30 days, or 90 days. And since I don't have very much info, I can only do one day. And right now, like I'm 90% in range, which I don't really go with that because, you know, range is from whatever to 180. And it has been higher than, than my normal. So my average has been 124. Uh, my average daily, total daily dose is 25 units. And my CGM has been read 90% of the time. And I did have to change my sensor yesterday, so that's probably why it's a little lower, 90% than, than normal. Also on the front page is your meal icon. So your meal types are, whoops, are, um, oops, I do do this a lot. It's, it's kind of hard sometimes to unlock the screen. When you click the meal icon, you choose whether you're having breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And then you say whether it's usual carbs for me, higher carbs for me, or lower carbs for me. And I do believe, don't quote me again, that if you have 50% more carbs than usual, do the higher than. If you have 25% less, do lower than. And so far, that's been pretty easy. Once we got it all set up and he showed me all those things, he told me what to expect for the next couple days. First of all, he said, you're gonna run higher than you normally will. And I've heard that from several places. 
so that wasn't a surprise. But it takes your weight, it makes a mathematical equation, of course, of what the normal basal and bolus is for a person of your weight, and then it reduces it by 75%. And it does this while it's trying to establish what your basal and bolus rates will be. So yes, I will talk about it a little bit later, it has been a little higher, so we'll go with that. He also said for the next three to five days to not have any snacks that contain carbs. And that meant no, I mean, no low carbs, nothing. He said cheeses, meats, some, you know, small amount of nuts kind of thing. So that is just so obviously it can establish the basal and the bolus as well. And it, it hasn't been that hard. He told me over and over and over that if you are used to doing cheats and hacks on your old insulin pump, that you can't do it on this and make it work right. You have to let go and let the insulin pump do its thing. Because even if you're at 200, and normally if, and I would do this as well, even though I was on control like you, but if, you're, if you see a 200 and it's going up, you think, oh my gosh, I gotta give some extra insulin. Obviously it's not working, boop, boop, boop. And then maybe you would have a low after that. Well, he said that will ruin the algorithm if you pretend to eat a meal when you're not or say it's more carbs than it is and it's not. Go in and give extra filling and say you're, you're priming your, your tubing, which you shouldn't do. So if you are a person that likes to do those kind of things and would have a problem letting it do it for you, and especially these first couple days when it's gonna be higher, this might not be the pump for you. <laughs> All right, so now we've come to the part that you should all fast forward to because this is the most interesting part. What have I liked or disliked about the pump so far? And I've only been on it 48 hours, so of course this is just a short amount of time and this does not mean it's gonna be like this forever. But one, yes, I have been higher than normal. I normally run at, you know, 110, 120. If it gets to 140, 150, I kind of freak out a little bit, but not too much. But it has, got, it has been higher and it has gotten up to 200, but that's as far as it's gotten. And so it hasn't been horrible. It also has kind of learned, like my first meal, post meal was higher. My second day was not as high. In fact, it was great. So it is learning, I think. Um, my breakfast has been a little complicated and that's because I don't usually eat breakfast. I've never been a real breakfast person. It usually just kind of messes up my blood sugars and I just don't really like much of it. And, but I am a coffee person and I do go to a coffee place pretty much every day. And if I don't, I make one at home. I don't use sugar syrups. I use sugar-free syrups, but I usually do have a soft top when I go to the coffee place. And so I usually take one unit for just to cover that. And if I didn't, it would be go up to 140, 150 sometimes more, just depending on the day. And so I usually took a unit to, to cover that and it was okay. And I asked the trainer, should I announce a meal for something that low? I think the soft top has 10 carbs or 15 carbs. And he said, yes, go ahead and, and announce that. And so the last two mornings I've gotten a coffee like I usually do, announced that I had it and it gave me 4.2 units of insulin. And I thought, well, I'm gonna go low cause I never take that much insulin. And I actually have gone high both days. And the first day was a little higher. Today was more of the like 140s, 150s. And so now I'm not sure what to do because does it think I'm eating a big breakfast? And if I don't have a coffee, because sometimes I don't have a coffee, is my basil going to be too low? Because it thinks I'm eating, you know, hash browns and eggs and toast. So. I'll let you know what happens with my breakfast. That'll be something I'll have to work out. Uh, the next thing is the battery. They ask if you charge your battery like 15 minutes a day when you get in the shower or, or whatever. And I'm bad at that. I usually charge my other pumps when they got down to like 30, 40% and then charge it up to 80 and then do that every couple of days. But I will try very hard to, um, and this is a wireless, you just put the pump right on top of it, which is kind of nice. but. It is one more thing you have to pack in a suitcase when you go somewhere. Um, oh, the alarms. The alarms are very quiet. The alarms, you could hardly hear. 
and I had a low right at the beginning and I was driving it home in my car and I couldn't hear it even in my car. And I'm kind of used to the tandem, either three beeping or four beeping really loud at you saying, hey, go get something. And this was really quiet. He did say that they were working on it and hopefully that would be an update for, for louder alarms. The other thing is the alarms all kind of sound the same. As far as I've noticed so far, I, I, I will try to pay more attention to them just to see. But it seemed like the alarm sounded the same for a low as it did for my sensor expiring. So I'll let you know on that. The last thing is I wish there was an exercise option that you could announce an exercise like you do a meal because it would be so nice to just say, I'm going on a walk, please reduce my basil since there are no basils. So I'm a little worried about that. I haven't exercised on purpose for the last couple days because I didn't want it to think it was my normal thing. I do try to exercise at least once a day, but you know, it's, you just never know. And so I wanted it to think that I don't exercise and so that might cause some lows. So I'm not sure how it's gonna figure that out. I just hope it does. But I do wish they had an exercise option. So I let, if you're watching this, maybe add that. That would be very helpful for people like me. But with that, I think that's it. I honestly have enjoyed it so far. I'll let you know in future videos how it's going. I figure I'll put another one out at like day seven and let you know how my blood sugars have been and if it's kind of evened out. If you want to subscribe and get notifications when I put out a new channel, a new video, that'd be great. I did not start this channel to make money or be a big uh, influencer, but I thought it would just be information that people could use when they were looking at new pumps because I think this is a cool new pump and I, I love reading about new pumps and learning about them because I think they're going to change really rapidly in the next several years. So with that being said, I'm going to go work in the yard because it's finally nice out and hope you guys have a nice weekend. See ya.